If you are having a midlife crisis and you don't want to buy a motorbike, but instead you want to buy a PC, this is the video. If you've stolen your dad's credit card and you're going to blow all his money on Star Citizen, this is the video for you. We are looking at buying a very high end, crazy, crazy expensive build for the game. Now, this has let me warn you at the start, this will not perform perfectly. This will not perform in this game anywhere near as well as other real games. This will be the best you can get in Star Citizen, which isn't brilliant. There'll be stutters still, there'll be points where you're like, what have I done? Where did all the money go? The game is unoptimized. It doesn't work perfectly in many parts of the game, the cities especially, but this PC is basically what I would recommend right now if you're trying to spend all your money on this game. All right, let's start off with the obvious place, the CPU. We are gonna go for a 7800X3D. Now, this, you might be tempted by the 7950X3D or maybe the 7900X3D. In my testing with the 7950X3D, it performs no different from the 7800X3D. So let's forget about that. And actually the 7900X3D actually has less V-cached cores than the 7800X3D. So not really worth it, not worth the extra money. The 7800X3D really is the premium option from AMD. And part of the reason for going AMD here is that we've got an upgrade path. So we've got our CPU, but then it is going to be the motherboard is the next option. So by choosing AMD now, we are going to get the option of upgrading this CPU in the future. If we went with Intel, the 14th gen maybe of Intel, we are stuck. We're stuck on that motherboard. There's nothing else we can do. Whereas with these CPUs and motherboards and this platform from AMD, we're going to get upgrade options in the future. The, maybe it'll be the 8000 series, maybe the 9000 series. I don't know what they're going to call it exactly, but there will be a faster CPU that you can just drop into the motherboard in this system. So I think that is the best long-term option for a PC right now at this point. So choosing a motherboard, I've gone for all the AM5 options. I've gone for the ATX full-size motherboards and I have gone price order. So we probably want to avoid the A620 motherboards. I think though getting a B650 one is probably fine. And seeing as this one here is nice and cheap, nice and colorful, they're effectively going to have all of the same connectivity options. The only potential reason you might want to think about the more expensive X670 ones is things like PCIe 5, which right now doesn't mean anything for performance really for PCIe, uh, for, for graphics cards, uh, but maybe in the future. But there won't really be any performance difference between something like this and then something like these more expensive, crazy ones. I've owned uh, an Asus AX670 board. It broke. I then just replaced it with this exact one here, the Gaming X from Gigabyte, and performance is basically the same. We're talking minute differences maybe, um, and then just differences in connectivity and things like PCIe 5, really. So we're going to, we're not cheaping out on the motherboard, but we're not going to put all of our money into it because it wouldn't really make too much difference. Then the big one, the, the thing really where most of the cost comes here. If you're going for a crazy spend all your money build, you're going to get a 4090. And the thinking behind that is basically that the 4090 is outrageously priced, but it's also outrageously performant. It's really, really quick. And again, we're going for a spend as much money as you can build. You're looking at 4K and this is significantly faster than the 4080 that I have. So at 4K, this is the one to go for if you've got all the money in the world. The only real issue in Star Citizen is that there will be part, many parts of the game where this will not be able to stretch its legs and you won't be able to go much past the performance maybe of the 4080 anyway. So the 4080 can hit 60 FPS most of the time at 4K and the 4090 because the CPU is the big bottleneck often in the game, won't necessarily be able to go much further past that because the CPU is also getting in the way. We're not going too in depth to that, for that now, but the 4090 is an incredible long-term option, I think, at 4K. If you're going to upgrade maybe the CPU down the line and get a bit more performance, or if Star Citizen ever performs significantly better than it does, if, you get if it gets optimized, then the 4090 comes to its own. 
If though you're wanting to buy a high end build but you're not targeting 4K, then forget this. This is this is way too overkill. And really the 4080 is still overkill at 1440p. Something probably the, the tier down from that, the 7800 XT from AMD or maybe the 4070, one of the 4070 versions might be a better option at 1440p. But we're going for a high end build, so we're gonna go for 4K. These are outrageous expensive. There's probably not much difference between, these ones are open box ones, so ignore those. There's probably not much difference between these models really cooling. What I would say is with all these parts that I'm showing here, don't just click the same one that I've clicked and buy that. Do your research, check out the reviews for each of these cars, which one has got better cooling, all that sort of stuff. Buying PC parts, I think, is just an exercise in research. There's plenty of information out there on the internet, reviews, YouTube videos about individual cars, and uh, you just do your research and then you buy the best option. So there you go. So then we're not gonna go into depth on everything. You're gonna need a case. I've got one of these. This is the best seller here on Newegg. Doesn't mean it's necessarily the best option. Um, I think things like this Fractal North thing look very nice. The size of the GPU is gonna be a factor when you're buying a case, so don't <laughs> buy a case that's too small, it doesn't fit the parts that you need. We don't want honey gold, goodbye. Um, again, don't necessarily just buy this motherboard, do your research, look at things like VRM temps, things like that, there's information out there. Hardware unboxed often do good comparisons between, uh, between motherboards for different platforms, so they're probably a good option. Again, don't necessarily just buy this. You're gonna need a bit of power for a 4090 because it can draw quite a lot of power. I think the recommendation is 850 watts upwards. Again, this isn't necessarily the option, but it's, and there's probably cheaper versions of this. I tend to, my, t my personal opinion is that you probably want a fairly decent brand for power supply. I, I don't think the cheaper ones are necessarily gonna just blow your house up, but I think it's probably worth getting decent branded uh, and again, decently reviewed power supplies. So we've got the 7800 FUV. Now, storage. I was tempted on this because to make a point, I was tempted to just throw in a standard SSD, not an NVMe one, M.2 NVMe. Because in Star Citizen for performance, there's no difference really in performance between a standard good SSD and a blazing fast M.2 PCIe 4 drive there just isn't i've tested this in the past performance wise nothing you maybe get a slight bump improvement in loading times with something like this but there's no gaming reason really to get something like this but there are other reasons and i think into the future if you're spending if you're trying to buy yourself some sort of crazy pc then probably getting a decent n.2 nvme is probably what i would do so there we go now the ram Again, I've only gone for 32 gigabytes here. Now I am getting increasing and I do need to test this at some point and <laughs> when I can justify buying a 64 gigabyte kit of RAM, I will do it. But there isn't really, as far as I can tell, any performance reason to get more than 32 gigabytes of RAM for Star Citizen right now. There might be reasons, there might be reasons, maybe you've got loads of Chrome tabs open, maybe you're trying to do a load of stuff in the background whilst also playing, but Unless that is the case, unless you're some sort of crazy power user, 32 gigabytes is what I would necessarily recommend. Now this again is a crazy PC build. So some of you out there might want to whack 64 gigabytes, maybe 128 gigabytes, who knows? But I wouldn't necessarily do that. The thing really to consider is the speed, the cast latency, all this sort of stuff, all these crazy numbers. The sweet spot really for Ryzen seems to be the 6000 CL, 30 or cast latency 30 kits and um, they don't all if i click on this the timings aren't all necessarily the same so it's these numbers here you can get kits that are 30 38 38 96 and there's all you basically have to look in and again do your research get on some youtube videos find out the recommended kits the bigger factor if you're wanting to tune your system is going to be the manufacturer of the RAM modules themselves. You're basically looking for Hynix kits with uh, DDR5, so they will tune better. I've done some testing on this before. Get more performance squeezed out of your RAM if you get a Hynix kit. I believe this one is, but again, do your research. And then we've got to call the CPU somehow, and 
I have air cooled my 7800 XUD and I've also got water cooling in there right now and really actually, <laughs> ironically, I think the air cooler that I had was better than the, uh, quieter than the water cooling. So I think going for a, a basic air cooling solution isn't a bad option. You might want to, again, depending on your size of your case and where you're putting all your fans and everything, you might want to consider water cooling, but um, 7800 actually doesn't run that hot. So I think, again, do your research, basically <laughs> put it to YouTube, 7800 XD, deep cool AK620, and there'll be somebody out there who will have tested that and you'll give, give you the information that you need. So there you go. All your money is now gone. Remember, as I said, let me make this clear. Don't necessarily just go out and buy those particular parts. This is a starting point of a video. You can use those sort of categories and the things I've recommended as starting points. Do your research. The main thing I'd probably recommend is come over to the Discord where there's people who know a lot more than me who will 100% be able to help you out with recommendations and parts you could actually buy. Actual, well-reviewed. They'll know exactly the things you should buy. So come over to the Discord and remember, don't come back to me. If you buy this, you buy Star Citizen and it doesn't perform very well. <laughs>